What's up? Inside is Deuce's Jacket, Vaping Insider. Today we're going to be going over the Vapors Cloud Temple version 2. I got the 25 millimeter version and the 28 millimeter version. Before we get into the video, click the link down below in the top comment in order to join our Facebook group. Check that out. You can see I got the 25 and the 28 millimeter one. We're going to be going over both of them. When I go over the main features, I'm going to be using the 28 because it's bigger. Here is your Temple RDA. Here is your spare cap, which is nice. Okay, I definitely like that. Now, this one comes with a squonk pin pre-installed. Okay, here is your solid 510 pin, bunch of spare O-rings, and some spare deck screws. You also get two rather nice hex keys as well. Here are both the RDAs. Obviously, this is the 28. This is the 25. You can see very, very much the same, just a size difference. Both have that low profile drip tip that I'm not too crazy about. And they have that honeycomb airflow. It is a top kind of airflow. I will explain it to you all in a minute. On the bottom, you can see some Vapors Cloud branding. Again, you can see that the gold-plated squonk pin is pre-installed. It is serialized, all right, right there. And uh, you, can, you can replace that with a solid pin, stainless steel threading around all of that. Let's get our trusty build stand and let me break it down for you. Right here is your drip tip. It's a little snug to get out, but I'd rather it be snug than loose. Again, very, very low profile as far as the drip tip goes. There is your honeycomb airflow right there. A little bit of temple branding, nice and subtle. And a little bit of vapors cloud branding, again, very subtle, all right? Pop the top off. Inside, you got this little plastic piece. Comes out just like that, okay? And just to let you know, right, you can see the opening here, right? Your drip tip actually doesn't sit in the barrel opening. It sits in this opening right here, okay? So I just want to point that out for you, all right? Now, you can see the, what they did with the airflow with this thing installed. What it's doing is it's basically directing the airflow down, on top of your coil it's almost like a quasi type of passage airflow if i had to find a better way to explain it that's what i would say all right now when you're installing this airflow piece especially on the clear barrel right you want to line up the airflow with that temple part and then you just turn it and now it gives you a good illustration of how that airflow works right because you can see through it there's your there's your uh, honeycomb airflow, and then you can see the airflow drops down from there. All right, so that's why I wanted to show you it with the clear cap. Conversely, same thing when you install it on the metal cap, line it up with the temple, and turn it. Now, when you install the cap, right, in order to cut the airflow down, you turn it this way. And I don't know if you can see the airflow holes closing down, but they definitely are. It's very hard to see on camera, just as hard to see in person. But I just wanted to show you the way it adjusts. It locks on both sides, okay? You can only go so far on both sides, all right? So you kind of got to like, you can't see it. You kind of got to like feel your way with the airflow, right? Like if this is wide open, you know, maybe move it a little, all right? until you find the airflow that you like because it's really tough to see okay let's go over the deck you can see it's a one terminal per post deck definitely not thrilled about that okay big big flathead post screws they're pretty huge let me open them up and show you how how big the space is in there Nice. You can get some nice chunky coils in there. Two O-rings that have really nice tolerance, okay? Got a little bit of a cutout here. I believe this deck is six millimeters deep, and I don't know if you can see the Temple logo inside, the same logo we had on the box, all right? I got the 25 on uh, Jimmy Vapor Road skull stand. Check that out. 
check out those post holes. Let me show you how to build this thing. Now, there are two ways to build this thing. You could either pre-cut your leads or you could just jam them both in there. With these types of decks, even though I hate one post, one terminal per post uh, build decks, I would have much rather have had a velocity in something like this, but whatever. I like to build them like this. I like to jam the coils in and get them as close as close as you can to the post right there and i'll explain that in a minute all right i'm going to explain that when i show you the interior when you put the airflow cap on but you want to get them trust me as close to the post as possible keep your fingers there when you're tightening them all right and then just tighten it down make sure you get it nice and tight and for the record with post screws like this i would have preferred hex not gonna lie not a fan of flathead screws, especially on something like this. I would have rather just use a driver. All right. So there you go. It's going to look janky. It's going to look something like that at first. All right. Now what you want to do, you can bend them out of the way. Go after your easy leads first. Make sure you don't clip the coil next to you. All right. Next to the lead you're clipping. Get your finger on there so they don't go flying away and get them out of the way. Repeat the process. Now, you're left with a pretty jumbled looking mess, right? Get your coiling rod in there, all right? And you just wanna kinda, you want them, you want them level with this part. I mean, there's no other place you can go, right? And once you're done, your coils should look something like that, okay? And now here's another pro tip I want to show you, okay? It's very important that your coils do not pass this metal piece right here. See that? See how my coils are not going past there? See that right there? It's very important that they're far behind that. And let me explain to you why. You have this interior plastic cap here, right? And you see that? You got to have some room. You don't want these coils brushing up against that plastic piece because you're just going to wind up melting it, all right? So make sure you leave yourself plenty of space. And you see where that coil lines up with that airflow now? You see how you're getting, you're hitting like the bottom half of that coil, and you're getting all the flavor from the bottom half of that coil. Again, passage type airflow, okay? All right, so let's put this on a build stand. We're oming out at 0.12. That is probably going to change. Let's make sure we got no hot spots, all right? See, we got a few coming around. Let's scrape them out. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's looking good. Glowing evenly from the inside out. Now you can see after the coils cooled off, we're down to 0.15, which is exactly where we should be. All right, let's wick this thing up. Let me show you how to wick this. This thing is easy. We're going to make one side of our cotton a little pointy. We're going to shove it right through, just like that. We're going to turn it around. We're going to repeat the process on the other side, just like so. You can see how nice and tight that is. That's how you want it. Now, on this one, I like to cut my wicks right down by the second O-ring, all right? Kind of just eyeball it, cut them right there. Same thing over here. Cut them right there. Maybe pull this one through a little bit, make it a little even. All right, that should do the trick. Now, very, very easy to place your wicks on this one. Just do a little roll and tuck. And if I haven't shown you before, see that little hole right there? That's where your squonking action is going to come from. When you squonk on this, the juice is going to come out of that little hole on either side. All right, same thing. Roll and tuck. Okay, just like that that now we're going to juice this thing up juice we're using today is johnny cream puff original just want to take some juice paint those coils nice get them nice and saturated same thing on the other side paint them up don't be shy with the juice once you got them all juice up you might want to give it a little test fire make sure we got vape oh yeah we got vape and it smells great now we're going to take our top cap gonna pop it on and there you go now she's all built up now we're gonna take the temple we're gonna pop it on the top side 
and I took the 28 and I popped it on the Hadron with the backpack review coming soon. Let's go over those cons and pros. We're going to start off with cons as usual. First con is going to be the degree of difficulty as far as building mm. on this deck has a little bit of a learning curve. It does. It's a little bit cramped because of that plastic piece. And it's kind of like a double-edged sword, right? Because that plastic piece is condensing the chamber and getting you great flavor. But at the same time, you have to allow for it while you're building. So there is a certain degree of difficulty to building on this thing. It might not be the most newbie-friendly deck. And I just got to put that out there. An intermediate builder will be fine with this deck. Staying along the same lines, my second con is, you know, one terminal per mm. post. I hate those decks. I don't like them. The only time I want to see a deck like that is in a single coil RDA. I hate sharing lead space. I would have almost rather have seen uh, some sort of velocity style deck on this thing than that type of deck. Yes, the post holes are huge. I just don't like building on decks like that. For me, it's a con. And the last con's gonna be, you better have some chicken lips if you're gonna be using that stock drip tip. Mm. It is skinny, it is short, and it is thin. As you can see, I had to replace it on mine. If you got nice full lips, you ain't gonna like that chicken lip drip tip. That's it though. That's it on the cons. Nothing really crazy. No big deal breakers here. Let's move on to the pros because we got a lot to talk about in the pros category. First pro is going to be, it comes pre-installed with a squonk pin, right? Now, I failed to point it out in the down low. I forgot. It has the same type of spare screws on the bottom of the atomizer as the Asgard does, the Asgard Mini. If you want to plug up that squonk pin, you can take out one of those screws and plug it up. So that's innovative. I kind of like that. You know, if you got a 1.27 millimeter hex key, you can kind of plug that thing up on the fly if you want. So that's kind of cool. I know with the Asgard Mini, some people had some leaking issues. So they also included a solid 510, which is very cool of them as well. So all around that 510 thing, the way they did it, pros all around. Smooth airflow on this one. Very smooth airflow, slightly restrictive, which to me, gives me the best flavor. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. You hear that? You can hear the smoothness. It's got a real nice swooshiness to it. It's not too loud. Just a really, really nice airflow. Well designed, good on you, Vapors Cloud. Because of the way they designed the airflow, it almost has a passage type airflow, right? That passage RDA that I reviewed. This one's going to be very tough to over squonk on. I mean, yes, can you get juice to come out of it? Yeah, if you're a moron, you can. But for the most part, if you're, if you're squonking regularly, this thing's not going to leak on you. I got to say, I'm very impressed with the build quality on this thing. Nice machining, nice O-ring tolerances, all around a very good job, very solid. You guys know, I'm not a fan of flat head deck screws. But if you're going to give me flathead deck screws, give me the ones that Vapors Cloud is using because they put in some nice, beefy flatheads. I like the deck screws that they used, even though they're flatheads. You get two top caps in the box, that condensed chamber that's going to give you great flavor, and it's a cloud chucker. Let me show you what I'm working with here. I got it on the Odin 250C, 0.17 build. 130 watts. Check it out. One more time. There's no flies on that. Ain't nothing wrong with that type of cloud production. Just beautiful. Fully saturated flavor. The flavor is almost excellent. I would say it's very, very good. So that was the 28 millimeter Temple V2. Let me show you the 25. Got it on top of the Vaporesso Gen, 0.2 ohms, 120 watts. Let me show you what it can do. Pretty nice, huh? Ain't nothing wrong with that. 
just a cloud beast. And like I said, the flavor is there as well. Let's move on to the five star rating system and see where this one scores. First category, as usual, is going to be the looks. I like the clean look of it, man. I think they did a bang up job on the looks. I like the honeycomb showing, even the temple branding and the vapors cloud branding. Very, very subtle. I think they did a bang up job on the looks. I love the looks of this thing. In the looks category, I'm going to give it a solid four stars. On the building and wicking category, this is where the Temple V2 is going to lose some points. And let me explain. I already explained to you I'm not a fan of single terminal per post decks. It's got a little bit of a learning curve as far as building on it goes. Not the easiest deck to build on, even though the post holes are massive. It's just not my favorite type of deck to build on. I like having a dedicated terminal for each of my leads, all right? So in that category, it's going to take a little bit of a hit. It's just as easy to wick as any other RDA. So in the building and wicking category, I'm going to score it an average score, two and a half, and I think that's being fair. As far as performance goes, you saw the clouds on this thing. This thing chucks. It's a cloud chucker, and it also delivers very, very good flavor, just shy of excellent, in my opinion. Now, here's a little bit of a pro tip on this one. As far as performance goes, you may actually want to go with a 2.5 millimeter coil instead of a 3 millimeter coil. You might get yourself a little bit more space in there. You also might get a little bit more airflow that way if it's a little too restrictive for you. But in the performance category, I got to score this one high. I'm giving it another four stars. Now, as far as the value goes, 50 bucks for the 25 millimeter one, $60 for the 28 millimeter one on Vapors Cloud website. I think it's a very fair value for the machining that you get, the build quality that you get, and the vape quality that you get. I'm going to score it a point above average and give it three and a half stars in the value category. We're going to add all these stars up. We're going to come up with a total star count of 14 stars. We're going to take these 14 stars, we're going to divide them by four, and we're going to come up with an average star score of three and a half stars. And that is exactly where this RDA belongs. It is a full point above average. Had the deck been a little better, this thing could have really been something special. It is a great RDA as it stands. I've been enjoying the flavor on it. I've been enjoying the clouds. I don't see it hitting the shelf anytime soon. It is Deuces Jack approved. Let's go over some of the specs on the Vapors Cloud Temple V2. It is available in 25 or 28 millimeters. With either version, you will get one metal and one acrylic cap. It is a two post deck with one terminal per post. It has a six millimeter deep juice well with a locking top cap. It comes with a squonking pin pre-installed, but there is a solid 510 in the box as well. It's available in gold, matte black, and stainless steel. Don't forget insiders, head on over to our Facebook group. It is a very civil page, very newbie friendly. The feed over there flies. It is extremely active. I would love to see you there. We're already 12,000 strong. We also started a brand new Reddit sub forum under the Vaping Insider name. I'd like to see you there as well. And that's it, insiders. That's all I got for you guys today. You keep living that vape life. We're out of here. Deuces.